Hello. So I'm not going to be talking too much, um, but I'm going to do the fourth coat of thickened Urushi lacquer on this glass bottle. And uh, it's not going to be too exciting or interesting or anything like that, but if you want to watch, feel free to watch. Um, and let's begin. I've already sanded this uh, from the last coat, so that's ready. good and stiff. I want my brush to be stiff because my goal is to make textured brush lines. I've already established those in the initial coats, but I want to make that a little bit more pronounced. All right. Starting with a little white tonoko, shiro tonoko, which is a clay powder. And you know what? I hear my cat scratching the door, so before I get too dirty, I'm going to open that. Next, I'm going to use a little calcium carbonate. About the same amount. A little bit less, actually. Um, and keep in mind, this is just my own mixture. It's what I've been doing for the past, uh, for all of these coats here. And everybody's going to have their own mixture. Some may be better than others. My reasoning for using some of these various powders is different from one to the next. Uh, this here is carbon black charcoal powder, sumiko, also used in making ink. And that is for the purpose of adding a little bit of lubrication uh, to the final mixture. Uh, beyond just color, the other two powders here are somewhat abrasive and the sumiko or carbon black actually aids a little bit in the wetting capabilities, I guess you'd call it, spreading. All right, here's kiyorushi. Which is the basic, um, less processed, it's been, it's been purified, but it's the less processed urushi. And finally, protein. In this case, animal hide glue or nikawa. And this is what really thickens the lacquer. As I start to stir that, you'll see how that becomes quite stringy. and the stringiness will be a result of the protein from the animal high glue combining with the urushi. You can use different kinds of protein um, depending on the technique, consistency, and final appearance and hardness that you desire. Egg white can also be used. Tofu can be used. Um, and you just mix it with urushi like I'm doing with this. Now you can see the thickness of that. Basically what happens when you add the protein, actually I don't know what happens, I don't know the chemical nature of it, but the urushi does bond with the protein and it causes it to thicken so that you can leave brush marks, texture, um, and it also increases the tough wearing property of the Urushi. Not necessarily helping with uh, overall strength or flexibility, but it just makes it hard wearing so that it doesn't scratch as easily. Um, not my specific mixture, but using protein in Urushi is called Shibo, Shibo Urushi finish. Of course, there are thousands and thousands of variations from one craftsman to the next, one region to the next. There's differences between 
Japanese lacquer practice and Chinese lacquer practice. There's also Korean lacquer. Each of them is going to vary a little bit in technique, composition, usage, all of that sort of stuff. Now I'm going to add a little bit more protein. My shop gets cold at night, so I have this heat lamp to warm the hide glue back up. Now you see how much thicker it already got, just with that little extra. I need to mix this a good bit more, actually, until it's a smoother, creamier consistency. I had some lumps in my tonoko. All right, we're getting there. It's starting to be smoother. Now this mixture can also be used as glue. Um, waterproof, waterproof glue, food safe glue. The animal hide glue, of course, is a glue on, it, on its own and in its own right, but as soon as it's exposed to water, particularly hot water, it softens and breaks its bond. But when combined with the Rushi, that no longer happens. You can add more glue to this mixture to increase the adhesion, but there comes a point, a tipping point, I guess, where it's too much glue at once, too much animal hide glue. and it's no longer waterproof. Okay, this is better. Still some bumps in it. That's pretty good consistency, that's what I want. This is going to allow all the brush marks to remain raised and obvious. And I'm basically just going to spread this around get it on the bottle first, and then I'll use the brush to create the texture. All right, my gloves are about to get super messy. Also bear in mind that I am definitely not an Arushi lacquer master. Some of the things that I say or do may actually be incorrect or counterproductive. I have not studied or trained for this my entire life, as some lacquer craftsmen do. I wasn't born into a lacquering family. <laughs> A uh, few people on Instagram who I've learned bits and pieces from by watching them, uh, they actually have been doing lacquer their entire lives, family trade. So I'm not an expert, that's for sure. I don't have any good books or resources to recommend either, unfortunately, uh, because I've been learning from such a wide array, wide range of sources, that I'm just gleaning nuggets of information here and there. There's no one specific place that I can go to um, whenever I need to know something else. So it's kind of all over the place, making it difficult to recommend learning sources. The only recommendation I can give is be super curious 
uh, like I am. Use the Google search engine. Translate web pages from Japanese, Korean, Chinese, if you need to. And uh, read from the original sources as much as possible. Fact check yourself. Sometimes, particularly if you're getting information from a European or American source, that information may not necessarily be correct. So you have to keep that in mind. You also have to keep in mind too, as I mentioned, that techniques will vary from region to region. Um, so something that is said from a Korean source may be different from a Japanese source on basically the same, the same application, the same technique. I was watching one Chinese lacquer craftsman and in his mixture of the lacquer paste, sabi, which this is basically sabi plus protein, um, he used pulverized old roof tiles instead of the calcium carbonate and shonoko and sumiko and all that. Just roof tiles from uh, old buildings, and roof structures in China that whatever was used to make them, their composition works quite well. something there. I'm gonna let that sit. I may actually come back and rebrush that in a minute um, as it starts to get a little more stiff. 